Good morning. Today is January 16th, the second Sunday after Epiphany. Welcome to worship in the environment of Ravenshield United Church. Located in a piece of land that has been for thousands of years the territories of the Longhouse Confederacy, Anishinaabe, and Mississauga. We thank the seven nations that signed the Williams Treaties, which allows us to share this land. We acknowledge the First Nations people, their history, spirituality, languages, and culture. Among the Ojibwa, Anishinaabe, and Chippewas, we acknowledge in particular the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation as our close neighbor and friend with whom we learn to live in peace and friendship. Announcements The in-person services in both churches will be suspended until the end of January 2022. Instead, all worship services during that period will continue online as before. The next online coffee meeting will be on 25th at 10 a.m. I shall send out the link for the Zoom meetings a few days before that. Ravenshoes AGM will be held online on January the 23rd at 1 p.m. The agenda and link for the Zoom meeting will be sent to all members and adherents prior to January the 23rd. Let us begin today's worship. Peace be with you, and also with you. Lighting of the Christ Candle The Magi followed a star, leading them to the light of the world. The candle flame reminds us that the light of the world is in our midst. Gathered as people who are drawn to the light, we center ourselves for worship. Call to worship. God's faithfulness is as high as the clouds. God's love stretches everywhere. God's righteousness is as tall as the biggest mountains. God's love stretches everywhere. God's justice is as deep as the ocean. God's love stretches everywhere. God's love is big enough for everyone. God's love stretches everywhere. Come, let us worship the God whose gifts flow abundantly. Voices United 218, we praise you, O God. Our tribute we bring 
praise. Gathering Prayer God of many gifts, you offer us so many things, food and drink, everlasting life, gifts for ministry, shelter from danger. Above all, overflowing love. In this time of worship, open us to your spirit that we might experience and celebrate the many gifts you give us. Amen. Today's responsive scripture is from Psalm 36. We shall proceed after hearing the refrain. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains, O God. Your judgments are like the great deep. All living things you save. How precious is your steadfast love, O God! All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright in heart. More Voices 81 Love Us Into Fullness The reader for today is Marilyn Butcher. Scripture reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. 
Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Abundant Love The abundant gifts of God work in the midst of this community of faith, then and now. What's going to happen in the future? Paul, as we know, was from a devout Jewish family. Based in the city of Tarsus, one of the largest centers of trade on the Mediterranean coast, he considered himself as having a legitimate birth, circumcised on the eighth day, an Israelite from an elite tribe, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, observed the law according to the straight piety of the Pharisees, a passionate defender of the purity of his religion even to the point of persecuting the church. He hated the church people so much that he went to the chief priest and got arrest warrants to arrest the Christians in Damascus and bring them to Jerusalem. Of course, he changed his position completely after having a vision of the ascended Jesus. And then, he completed his first missionary journey with Barnabas, who helped him after his conversion. They went from Antioch to Cyprus, then to Southern Asia Minor, and finally returned to Antioch. In his second missionary journey, the distance he traveled was much longer. He started from Jerusalem in late autumn, 49 Common Era. And he arrived Corinth about a year later. He spent about 18 months there and founded a church. The first letter to the Corinthians is a letter from Paul to the Corinthian church after he left. He wrote this letter to the Christians he knew because something went wrong. He wanted to give them warnings and advice. You were pagans. That was a warning to the Corinthian church since it was a community of mixed characters. There were Gentile converts and Jews, slaves, people who were wise, powerful, and even of noble birth. Men and women were fully involved in church life, 
anyone may pray aloud, speak tongues, prophesy, and act aesthetically in worship. They started to compete against each other. Some claimed to be Paul's disciples, while some Apollos. Was Paul a better master than Apollos, or the opposite? Shouldn't Jesus Christ be the only foundation of the church and God as the one who makes things grow? A glance at the map will show that Corinth, Corinth was made for greatness. All traffic between Athens, the north of Greece, and Sparta in the south had to be routed through Corinth. Most of the east to west traffic of the Mediterranean passed through Corinth too, by dragging their ships across the narrow land bridge about four miles wide, or only their cargoes. If the ships didn't want to make a lengthier journey travel around Cape Malia, the most dangerous cape even for experienced sailors. Because of this location, objects of luxury from everywhere found their ways into Corinth that made it a rich and populous city with one of the most significant commercial trades in the ancient world. Just look at the reconstructed theatre there. The city itself. They were gorgeous, even according to our modern standards. Also, don't forget, the temple of Aphrodite was just up the hill nearby, with the statue of the goddess of love and 1,000 priestesses attached to it. They were sacred prostitutes who would come down every evening to the streets of Corinth. Being pagans, the above mentioned was a part of their culture. It could be an advantage to them because of the exposure. However, what if they couldn't master their talents and experiences? Paul was deeply rooted in the Jewish culture, which contained many good elements. However, since it's so apparent that anyone who hangs on the tree is cursed by God according to this tradition, Jesus could not be an exception, which drove Paul to take extreme actions against Jesus' followers. He was there at the stoning of Stephen. He wanted to become better even though he had to hurt someone. So, did Paul attempt to hurt the pagans who worshipped other gods? No, he didn't. The harmful experience started with those who had an affinity to his culture, whom I visit to temp the Jerusalem temple, could be found in synagogues, or struggled to know and assimilate into Jewish culture. Now, Paul wanted, warned the Corinthian Christians that they were like infants in Christ, because what happened to him before happened among them now. They let their talents and experiences work against them. Gifts, like speaking, praying, teaching, and writing are not the only gifts from God. The mason, carpenter, painter, fisherman, and even slave all have their unique gifts from God. Why should one be rated higher than the other? When you see someone unhappy, a person says, Are you okay? The empathy and the word of love expressed are the gifts of God. It has nothing to do with the person's intellectual level or social status. The person was not even the owner of the gifts. They are something given to serve and build relations. The activities within the group, if they aren't self-serving, one can safely 
consider them as initiated from the same Holy Spirit. Are you okay? You could be anyone, could even be the church. If you care, show it and let the God-given gifts in you be there. You may hesitate though, since you don't feel you have enough wisdom nor knowledge or faith. Do you think having them is always helpful? The serpent in the Garden of Eden was clever. The fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden was promising in giving the woman wisdom. Would you worry about not having that kind of wisdom? The people in China knew how to build the Tower of Babel. The Magi knew how to read the meaning of the star. Astronomers can explain the origin and evolution of celestial objects. They even propose theories about understanding our universe based on mathematics and natural sciences. Are we missing these know-hows? Or are we puzzled for not having the faith of the great persons like Abraham, who was willing to offer his only son as a sacrifice? Or simply a faith that can move mountains? We have reasons to hesitate since they could come from sources other than the Holy Spirit. Only if they are for building up one another, turning visions into actions, we may safely consider them as coming from the Holy Spirit. What about healing? Working of miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. These lead us into the battles between science and pseudoscience, history and futurology, psychology and parapsychology, just to name a few. We might not share the same opinions on all of them. However, we have to acknowledge that Jesus didn't want to use his healing power and miracles to make disciples. Instead, he did whatever he could to channel the love of God to the people he met. The love of God is abundant, so abundant that we can describe it as filled to the brim and overflowing. It shows in the gifts people should receive. The Holy Spirit leads us to manage them so that they don't have to be hierarchical or divisive. We shouldn't put one above the other or below. Are you okay? Might be better than a sermon. Your presence is as essential as having the management skill for running an organization. Story time. Once upon a time, a person said to the master, may I become your disciple? Then the master said, Keep your eyes closed and then you are my disciple, but I shall teach you how to open them wide. What do you mean? said the person. The day you open your eye, you will see there is nothing you can learn from me or anyone. What then is a master for? said the person. To make you see the uselessness of having one. The Corinthians forgot that they didn't possess the, whole, the spiritual gifts that held the loving community together. They are all from God. Are we doing the same? Jesus transformed water into wine at the wedding in Cana. The wine was a gift of God. Does it make sense if the host keeps the fine wines instead of giving them to the guests? We believe that resources are sufficient. We believe that resources shouldn't be in the hands of a small fraction of the population. 
we believe that resources must be used to hold communities and the world together. Let the Holy Spirit work on us, move us so that we dare to live with an abundant spirit that stands in contrast to many of the world's realities. Amen. More Voices 10. Come and seek the ways of wisdom. The ministries of the church include hospitality, teaching, outreach, music, counseling, and more. They would be hard to continue without you. Thank you for your continuous support. We offer our talents so that others may be encouraged to share abundantly. There are different ways to show your support. A lot of you have scheduled for par or sending your check to the church office by mail. For those who feel comfortable with the modern technology, both CanadaHelps.org or eTransfer would work. You can find the complete information here or you can contact the church office for more details. dedication. Loving God, whose gifts are overflowing, as you have poured out love upon your people, so we seek to give back to you even a little of all you have given to us. Take and use the gifts you have entrusted to us, and which we now offer back to you, that we in turn might overflow with love for your world. Amen. 
It's lovely that the United Church of Canada keeps serving those in need through funding in mission and service, even when the church is suffering financially. It's even more remarkable for us since we belong to this denomination. Then we partner automatically with those who offer the services with or without us realizing that relationship. You are encouraged to do more, of course, if you find something in particular with which your heart resonates. Today, we shall watch the video Bill's story. I hope you enjoy it. We were called the Don't Make a Wave Committee and we met in a church basement. And one night uh, when we were leaving the meeting, a man named Irving Stowe said peace. And I said, no, we should make that a green peace. And Irving came back the next meeting and said, wow, that's a good name. We should call ourselves Greenpeace. So we did. My name is Bill Darnell. I live in Vernon, British Columbia. I'm a member of Trinity United Church. I'm a grandfather, a retired teacher, a husband, and I've been an environmental activist most of my adult life. Camping had a big effect on me because I grew up in suburban Toronto and didn't have uh, much access to the natural world. When I was at camp, we were allowed to meet nature on our own terms for a full two weeks. And that really sustained me through my adult life. So when I saw things that were wrong, things that we were doing to damage our environment and our life, I was able to take action to correct them, to draw on that experience. When I was 25 years old, not that far removed from camp and living in Vancouver, the United States government was testing nuclear weapons in Alaska. That seemed crazy. And so a number of us sailed a vessel, also renamed Greenpeace, to Alaska. And ultimately, we were able to stop the United States government testing nuclear weapons underground. Your mission and service gifts support over two dozen United Church-run camps across the country. Every year, your generosity gives thousands of children an opportunity to go to camp. Thank you to your gifts to mission and service of the United Church of Canada. Camping made an incredible lifelong dif difference for me and I know it will make a lifelong difference for other young people across this country. Prayers of the People If you have prayers requests, please let me know before the next Sunday service. We respect everyone's privacy, so unless I have your consent to share with others, the privacy concerns will stay with me only. With your permission, we shall send your prayer concerns to the church members by email, and they will not appear in the video. Today, I'm inviting you, all of you, to consider things for which you are thankful. I'll show you some slides and you can say your prayer out loud at the place where you are worshipping. God is hearing. Therefore, you can also say it in your hearts and the Holy Spirit will guide you. In the end, we shall say a response together. Let us pray. We have been gifted to overflowing.
for your abundant love, which knows no bounds, we give you thanks, O God. Amen. More Voices 140 As Long As We Follow As long as we follow in the way that God is leading, we know God's reign will surely come. As long as we hope there is a future for creation, a future for the universe, we know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. As long as we follow in the way that God is leading, we know God's reign will surely come. As long as we sing, there is a future for creation, a future for the universe. We know this, we know this, yes, God's reign will surely come. Commissioning and Blessing Let's be joyful and full of hope when we receive the blessing from God. God has blessed us with an abundance of life. God's promise for the world is filled to the brim and overflowing. God has blessed us with an abundance of hope. God's hope for the world is filled to the brim and overflowing. God has blessed us with an abundance of truth. God's truth for the world is filled to the brim and overflowing. Go and offer the world God's abundant gifts, for there are more than enough. God's love for the world is filled to the brim and overflowing. Amen. May the blessing of God be upon you. May God's love light all your way. May the grace of Christ enfold you. Our worship service this morning has come to an end. Remember, you can always reach me by leaving a message in the office or calling me directly. See you all next Sunday.